and drink and everything comes back to normalcy and everybody gets slack and gets back living like hell again. And guess what happens? He comes. That's why God is saying, stay ready, be prepared. I'm coming. The other thing I want to preach, I'm about done, that the Lord told me about this nation. Here's what he said. He said, Mark, he said, I'm going to reset the nation. You mark it, you can write it down. He said, I am going to reset this nation. So he didn't tell me how, but I have an idea how. I've got three things that he could definitely reset this nation by. Now, whether that means it's going to be something good or something bad, I don't know. All I'm telling you is here's what he told me. He said, and he told me to tell you, so I want you to tell him tonight. He said, just like this. He said, you see this woman's life? He said, you show her this woman. He said, I took this woman and I reset her life. He reset her life, just like he will this nation. Somebody said, well, how will he do it? There's, there's three ways I believe that Lord can reset it. Number one, I'll start from the, from the bottom up. I had them in order, but I'll start. Number one, it could be the rapture. If the rapture takes place, this nation would be reset in a heartbeat. It'd be completely different than it's ever been. You talk about being a reset. Secondly, he could reset the nation by sending the greatest revival that the history of the world, and, and that's possible also. But we're seeing revival where God is wanting to, you know, and allowed to be moved in our life. We're seeing revival, but I believe in a greater scope. Thirdly, new leadership. New leadership coming into our nation. God could use that to reset our nation. Listen to this preacher. You better listen to me. Do you understand that this woman, she was definitely under the wrong kind of leadership. She was not being led by the one that she should have been led by. She, she was not being led by anything good. This woman was being led to somewhere else. She was being led off. But let me tell you right now, but when the Spirit of God showed up, when Jesus showed up and he saved this woman, she received a new spirit. She received a new life. She became a new woman. She became, as, as I like Sid Ross, she became one new person. New leadership had come into her life. We need to be led not by the flesh, not by the will of man, but we need to be led, come on somebody, by the Spirit of the living God. And, and God said, I will reset this nation. He reset her life. What does that mean? Three things. Number one, there was change or purpose change. My purpose, I know my purpose. Do you know your purpose? When God changed me, when he changed you, remember how you changed? And when you changed, all of a sudden, you didn't want to sin anymore. You didn't want to go those places. Come, is it not true? You didn't want to do those things anymore. You didn't want to go those places anymore. You didn't want to even be around those types of people anymore because God had reset. Come on, somebody had reset your life. And he had changed you, not from the outside in, but from the inside out. I say let God change us again. Let him, let, let him, the Bible says that he'll change us from glory to glory, that we'll go from glory to glory with God. Her purpose in life had changed. She didn't go home looking for that man. She left her water pot because she was so excited because she knew that she had just met the one that was going to die for her. She knew that that very moment that Jesus had just saved her, he is the lifesaver. Our God is the lifesaver. He had just saved this woman. She went from being overcome to being an overcomer. You're an overcomer tonight. We have overcome by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. And we see it in her life because God had cleansed her. He had spoken to her, and here's the key. He had told her the truth. There's a lot of people who don't have any backbone in a pulpit to tell people that sin will send you to hell. It will send you to hell. You sin and you don't repent and you live in that, you will go straight to hell, period. Here you are. Preacher, no preacher. You're going to die without Christ. But when you give your life to God and there's a change that comes, you'll know it comes because you won't want to do those things anymore. You won't want to listen to that kind of music. You don't want to drink Jack anymore. You're not under, you remember that guy, that, that video under the influence of Jack? You don't need Jack anymore. You've got the Holy Ghost. You've got a wine, praise God, that'll make you fine every time. Amen. The influence is God's influence. She became an overcomer. 
She was bold as a lion. And all the people that had been talking about her and, and, and looking at her bad, but she went into the, and, when, and you know what? And when she went into the city, I believe her face was glowing. She told everybody in the city, everybody around, come and there's a man out here, the Messiah's at the well, and he's waiting on you. He's changed my life. See, the word of her testimony where she had been shut up and shut down and beat down and everybody talking about it. Now she was free to worship him in spirit and in truth. Now she could stand up and declare that I'm not going back to that lifestyle. I'm not going back to that place, but I'm going where God tells me to go. And I'm going to do, hallelujah, what God tells me to do. Come on, somebody. Let God reset your life. Let God reset your life. She went. The woman then, verse 28, left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men. That's why God put that in there. They may have all been living around her. She may have unforgiveness and bitterness in her life, but all of a sudden, as she went, she saw the priest, and as she went, as she began to move forward and go back and tell them, everything would change. She didn't look at them the same anymore. I don't look at people like I used to. I don't see them that way anymore. I don't look at them when they have tattoos. I don't look at them when they're living in sin. I see a soul, and I point them to you. She said, come with me. She went, and it, it's, it's underlined. She went to the men. Glory be to God. Come on. She said, you know what? Come on. They may have been thinking something nasty, something dirty. Watch this. She's, come on, I'm teaching like it's supposed to be pretty. They may have been thinking something, but she said, follow me. She's like the Pied Piper. Till they come, boy, flock. Come on. She walked them all the way out the well. You know what might have happened? Might have been the greatest revival happened by that well. It doesn't say, but I guarantee they something took place. And she says to him, come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and they came unto him. There's a place that we've got to come out of right now tonight. Raise your hand to God. Everybody, I'll let you see. see. But there's a place tonight that God wants us all to come out of. Whatever that place might be. When you really search your heart, and I preach tonight, you let God search your house. Maybe you've got unforgiveness. Maybe you've got bitterness. Maybe, maybe you, you're living in fear. Maybe you're living in the past. Or maybe you're just not living at all. But I want you to know tonight that God said, I want you to tell them they have to come out of that place. I have to come out of that place. Saturday in my house, I was angry with God. I was mad at God. It wasn't God that killed my cat. It was the devil that killed my cat. And I was more angry because, you know, we prayed so long for him to come home and he got crushed by that garage door. Michael saw him, found him. Came downstairs. I ran up to him as fast as I could. I did everything I could to resurrect him from the dead. I don't have any power apart from God. I tried everything. I, I did. I even did mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation on him. I poured water on him. I said, come on, boy, you can make it. You can make it. You can do it. But then Bill... Come in here Sunday morning. He said, God neither tests nor tempts anyone with evil. That's straight from God to me. And said that he'll take this. He said, all things work together for good. And I believe things have already happened for good. Uh, last night, uh, me and my son talked about God like we never talked about God. Something happened to him up next. He went up to the grave. He said he saw this mist, this white mist. I'll let him tell you. I don't want to tell you. I'll let him. You know, I don't believe he's pastor. I believe he saw it. I've been praying he, that God reveal himself to him more than he's ever through this trial, through this thing. Because he saw the cat. He was the one that lifted the garage door and he came down to get me. It devastated. It devastated me. It devastated my whole family. We had to buy to dig a grave and bury him. And that was one of them things God said, you know, in the scripture, there would be bitter herbs. I hate the devil. I hate him more than I've ever hated him. So you know what I did? I grieved. I was angry. That wasn't doing me no good. That was doing the devil good. And God and people, y'all praying, other people praying. 
And this is the way I feel about this woman. She had grieved. She might have even been angry with God. But he showed up again in her life. And so, you know, I, I just, I've just gone on a, just a pair, a pair on the devil. I'm just downstairs worshiping God more than ever, singing, praying, laying on my face, crying out to God. I told the devil, I, people say this in the world, it's on like Donkey Kong, it's on. He's the one that killed that cat. He always will do something. When, when you think of all the good that we've done through God in this church, all of us. He killed my cat. I've got mouth. said, so will you show your face, you stinking devil? Where are you? Come on, show your stinking face. So y'all pray. And it's getting better. Hardest thing I've ever had to go through. In a long, long time. So the way it affected my son. And we know that's the devil. He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I said, God, you know, why didn't you raise my cat? You know, you, I've, I've seen, actually, saw Randy Tinch. Remember Tim Tinch was here? I saw Tim Tinch. Was he God using him. I saw him raise a cat from the dead. I saw it with my own eyes. I saw I gave him count for God. I saw it down in Carnage. I saw it one night. He raised a cat. The cat was dead and he prayed for it and the thing jumped up on all fours. His, his hair stood up and it was alive. I'm telling you the truth. I saw it. You say, Are you crazy, preacher? No, if God God could raise a cat from the dead, what's that to God? But for some reason he didn't. And that's what made me the maddest, I guess. But it also made me realize something. It made me realize just how much I truly do need God. Because if it wasn't for God, the devil would kill all of us. If it wasn't for God, he'd crush every one of us. Her sin nature, I'm done right here. Her sin nature, her decisions and her choices didn't move God. It didn't move God against her. I mean, look at me, church, everybody in here. It doesn't move God against you. But I want to say this, but when he shows up, and he speaks. It'll change our life. It's already changed our life. Like Bill said tonight, this is the word of the Lord to the church tonight. He's a life-saving God. One day it can make all the difference with a man or with a woman. One day. When God shows up, he promises in his word. That's all I have is his word. He spoke the word to this woman. That's all she had. That's all you and I have is his word. We're going to believe what he says. I'm going to believe what he says. We're going to tell what he says. Because it's the only thing that's truth. Truth, he said, will set you free. One last thing. He told Pilate. He said, everyone. He was the procurator. I can see it right now. And he, he you know, Pilate thought, surely, after he scourged him, and, 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 uh, and, and he was beaten, that they would let him go. That's why he did it. He, he thought for sure that they would release him. But then he asked Jesus the question. And he talked about truth. And Jesus said, Everyone that heareth my voice is of the truth. His voice, yes, you can hear his voice audibly. Some have heard it audibly. You can hear his voice on the inside of you. Michael asked me last night, Danny, Michael, said, how do I know that God speaks? I said, because there's an unction. There's, there's, there's like a, something that moves you. It's hard to explain. And, and I said, but it's God. And I said, it's always towards him. It's always about truth. Always. But God wanted me to tell you, but this is his voice. This is his voice. Those other things are his voice, but this is his voice to us. His word. He even told them, he said, you have your traditions. You remember how they mocked him? They said, we have Moses, we have all. And Jesus said, but I'm the word of God. He is the word of God made flesh and dwelt among us, all of us. Tonight I'm thankful that he says to us, he that speaketh unto me. Amen. Aren't you glad to know him tonight? He wants to reset. Look at me. If you need your life reset by God, just ask him. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. I love you. Stand to your feet. Have you enjoyed this tonight?